we are doing the final assembly. So now it's time to do our final assembly. We need to end up getting a lot of the pieces that we have been working on up to this point, along with some new ones to be able to put the chassis itself together. So we're gonna need two of our drive rail assemblies that were fully completed. But then we're also gonna to need to grab four of the long through bore bearings, four of the three millimeter spacers, six of our shaft collars. We need our mechanum wheels that we put together earlier. We're also gonna need um, our smaller length of C-channel as well as two of our 420 uh, lengths of extrusion. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a number of pre-loaded brackets. So we have 12 of these 90 degree brackets that are pre-loaded with the hardware already in them. This will make it a little bit easier for us to do the assembly during this step. The last thing that you're going to need is some tools to be able to finish out the job. So we end up having our 5.5 millimeter crescent wrench. We have our 5.5 millimeter nut driver as well as our 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. To get started, let's end up clearing out a little bit of space here so we're able to have the things that we need in front of us. And we're gonna move one of these drive rails aside. All right, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to start with one of our drive rails and we're gonna to wanna to attach on a pair of our 90 degree brackets. So we're gonna start by feeding these into the slots onto the back here. Now, these are gonna be used as a, as a basically a brace on the back of the machine. So we, what we wanna be able to do here is we can take a piece of extrusion or even a piece of the channel is also helpful. And you can basically feed this in here to be able to make sure that we keep the spacing that we need is correct. You're gonna to need to do a little bit of jiggling on the hardware itself to be able to make it where it can fit inside of the slots on the extrusion or on the channel. But once you kind of get that in place, you can kind of hold this in here and then start by tightening down the parts that are going into the C channel. Once that side is tightened down, you can remove the piece of extrusion and then you're gonna to wanna to flip the drive rail over so then you're able to do the same thing along the bottom. Again, you can take the piece of extrusion and use this as your handy tool to make sure that your spacing is correct. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in here and we're going to go ahead and set that up and then attach down this side. Once that's complete, you can remove the extrusion and set it back to the side. What we're then gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to need to put in another two brackets that are gonna be used for the center brace that is gonna go in between our two drive rails. So what we're gonna to wanna to first take is a one piece of this down here, and we're gonna to wanna to take another bracket and put that onto the bottom. Now, it doesn't particularly matter where the center brace is. We're gonna put it somewhere between this motor and our front drive axle, mainly because we want to be able to keep a little bit of the front of the robot open so we're able to have a manipulator or an intake. Uh, depending on every year's game, usually you're gonna want some space in the front here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna align these up with the top line here of this uh, bearing hole. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up right about there and then take this and tighten this into place. And then we're gonna go ahead and line the bottom bracket up with this top bracket to make sure that we are 
aligned and ready to go. So we go ahead and we line that up and then we're going to tighten this down. Once this is complete, what we're going to want to do is then take the, our piece of channel that we have that is going to be our cross brace, and we're going to want to kind of put this in between. We want to take this and put this in between our two pieces here and make sure that this is going to sit nice and flush on the end, and then we're going to go ahead and just connect this on. Then we're going to flip this over, and then we can tighten up the other side. All right, now that we're done with attaching this cross member onto our one set of drive rails, we're going to want to set this drive rail aside and we're going to want to go ahead and grab our previous drive rail that we have not done yet. Now that we have this one in front of us, we're going to want to duplicate what we did with our previous one. So let's start by taking two of these and we'll get these aligned up. We're going to use a piece of extrusion here as well to help us kind of guide this along. Now once we get this aligned, we're just going to want to go ahead and tighten these down. We're going to remove this extrusion and then we're going to want to go ahead and repeat this on the other side. All right, now, once that is complete, what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and also put in the remaining two 90 degree brackets and feed them into the front and into the bottom, the front one, both of them into the front here so that we're able to get these lined up relatively where we have our other ones. Now, we're gonna keep these loose so that they're easier to be able to put on uh, our other drive assembly here and just our drive rail assembly here just in a moment. So now that we have these on this rail, we're going to want to go ahead and grab back our previous rail. So then we're able to get these lined up. So we're going to start by kind of going ahead and getting these kind of put in here. And then we want to make sure that we're able to confirm where we have the edge of this is lined up in the same location um, so that we have it lined up with the edge of this one. And it looks like right about, right about there should be where we want to have this. So once we have this where we want it, we want to go ahead and we're going to tighten down all of the ones on this bracket here.
Once that's in place, you're going to want to go ahead and flip the drivetrain over so then you are able to tighten the rest of the bottom in place as well. All right. Now that we have the cross member in the front on, we're going to want to go ahead and put our cross member in the back on. So we need to go ahead and grab our two pieces of extrusion and we're going to go and feed in our first one. Now once we get this back piece in, we want to make sure that these two edges are going to be about the same in length. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to adjust this slightly to make sure that these are roughly the same. Now once that's there and that's centered, we're able to go ahead and just connect in this piece of extrusion. Once we get this piece of extrusion in, we're going to want to go ahead and repeat this with the extrusion piece that would be on the bottom of this chassis. Now we flip the chassis over and we attach our last piece of extrusion. Go ahead and we line these up, make sure that these are the same as they are on both sides, and then we're going to go ahead and just tighten down the rest of our brackets. Once the extrusion is all set on the back and we end up having our other piece of channel holding us onto the front, it is now time for us to get our wheels on. So this is going to be the time where we're going to need our spacers and our through bore bearings. So we're going to need to grab those from when we put them aside. What we're going to want to do is we're going to start by putting on our through bore bearings where we end up having the flange end is going to be flush against the channel itself. So we're going to put those on first. Then we're going to want to go ahead and follow that up by putting on the spacers. Once the spacers are on, the next step is for us to put on our mechanum wheels. Now this is where it's a very important step is that there are two different types of wheels. So we end up having our left wheels, which are the ones that I currently have in my hand. And then we also have our 
right wheels, which I now have in my hands. Now, they are determined by what the leading edge of the roller is while you're moving forward. So you're gonna to wanna to have left, right, left, right, or it creating basically an X pattern from the top down uh, on your chassis to make sure that the robot is able to strafe, be able to move off in different vectors, as well as being able to drive forward and backwards. So now that we have our wheels are all laid out where they need to be, now it comes the time for us to just attach them on. So we're gonna go ahead and drop each one of these wheels into their positions. And then the last step is we need to go ahead and grab our shaft collars. We're gonna to wanna to end up add, adding a shaft collar to each one of the shafts that we have, including the ultra planetary, uh, that it does not have a wheel attached to it, just to be able to make sure that that shaft is gonna stay constrained and is gonna stay in place throughout use. So we go ahead and do that. And then our final step is we wanna go through and take our Allen, our Allen wrench here, and we wanna go ahead and tighten all of our shaft collars down. Now that the shaft collars are tight, our wheels are set, and we are now ready to put a control system onto our drivetrain to get ready for the competition. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, support at revrobotics.com. Good luck, and we'll see you out on the field.